What's going on hikers? In today's video, I am so excited to share with you how to stay more warm and comfortable and just enjoy your experience in the backcountry that much more, especially in the colder temperatures and in the winter time. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel because that's what we're all about. You know, sometimes I'll hear my gear just calling and longing, Jeremiah, and I'll say, yes, gear. And it's like, take me on an adventure. And I'm like, I can't. It's not backpacking season, it's winter time. And my gear's like, ha ha, silly Jeremiah. It's always backpacking season. And I'm like, okay, gear, let's go. You know, hopefully in this video, I inspire you to get out there, especially if you haven't already been winter backpacking, get out there and enjoy it. I mean, check this out, for instance. We're having so much fun actually straight up sledding in the backcountry. <laughs> it's a completely different experience in the winter time. And my hope is that you'll enjoy it as much as me. So let me give you some advice that I've learned. So tip number one is you gotta worry less about your base weight and more about having fun. You're, there's, look, here's the reality. I'm not gonna lie to you. Your backpack's gonna weigh more. And if you're an ultra lighter, maybe try tarp camping in the winter time. But you're gonna, you're gonna add pounds to your pack. You're gonna be bringing more clothes and more food and stuff to start a fire and maybe a saw to cut wood. And all these things, it's gonna add up. But <laughs> we're gonna have a lot of fun at camp. I'll promise you that. Tip number two is to be bold, start cold. You don't wanna get super sweaty in the backcountry, so you don't wanna wear all of the things that you brought whenever you first get out of your car and you're ready to start walking. You know, you want to be cold at the beginning and you're gonna warm up very, very quickly because you got the backpack on, it's keeping your back warm. And maybe start out in just your base layer, you know, your shirt that's against your skin and possibly a rain jacket or windbreaker. Or if it's really cold, oftentimes I'll wear a quarter zip fleece out there. And if I need to, I can stop and ditch it and put it back in my pack. That way I'm not sweating. You're really raising your risk of hypothermia if you're getting sweaty in the winter time. So that brings me to tip number three, which is dress in layers. You wanna kinda of be like an onion and be able to peel things off and put it on as you need it. You're walking, you take a break, Keep that puffy in, in the top of your backpack so that you can throw it on real quick whenever you stop. You know, I'll show you some of my base layers. Whenever I'm walking, I have this 150 version. So there's 150 grams of merino wool per square meter of fabric in this shirt. This is by Smart Wool. And I'll link all this stuff in the description that I talk about today as long as I can find a link. But something like this, that's merino wool is super nice in the winter. And don't forget about the bottom half of your body. You want to keep it warm too. I'll wear something like an, an athletic synthetic leggings, or if it's going to be really cold, something like this, which is the Smart Wool 250 leggings. And you can get the 150 version of those below. So dress in those base layers, peel them off, put them on. Where's the perfect place to buy them? Well, that would be today's video sponsor, Backcountry. Thank you, backcountry.com, for sponsoring today's video. And it is where I bought a ton of the gear that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So you can check them out, go to backcountry.com. They have all types of gear for backpacking and other things outdoors. And there's gearheads on there. And if you click, you can actually talk to them. They're experts in the field of whatever gear that you're talking about. And they can give you some good solid advice like they have me in the past. If you want a little discount, they have given me a code Jeremiah15. And if you type that in, I'll also put it in the description. That will give you a 15% discount on your order. And some exclusions do apply. So thank you again, backcountry.com, the perfect place to buy your gear for the backcountry. Tip number four is to integrate some of your summer gear to add to your winter gear. You're like, well, I don't really understand what that means. Let me give you an example. So I have a 15 degree sleeping bag. If I throw a, a cheap Costco top quilt on top of it, it's gonna add an extra layer of protection and keep me nice and toasty warm. Now, the main reason I do something like this is usually because condensation. You know, in the winter time, um, the, my breath, you know, and the air outside has water in it and it settles and condenses. And what happens is my sleeping bag's a little bit wet and that makes it a little, a little bit less fluffy, so I'm not as warm. So if I throw something cheap, something I would use in the summer that doesn't weigh a whole lot on top of it, 
that is going to collect that condensation and my bag under it Ooh, i'm going to stay nice and toasty warm so use that or you know if you don't have a, a top quilt that you could throw over top of you sometimes i will use my summer sleeping bag that weighs like a pound and i'll use that as a bag liner inside of my 15 degree bag and it may weigh an extra pound but at night while i'm lying there and i'm so comfortable oh i don't mind that extra pound at all Number five, this might be a bit controversial because it's a luxury item. You don't necessarily have to have it, but remember we're all about being more comfortable and enjoying and staying warm and having a good time. I'll never again be caught without a backpacking chair in the winter time. Sometimes in the summer, I'll just take the pad, but in the winter time, I'll put the pad in the chair. This is the Helinox Chair Zero. You know, it's a little bit more expensive, but it only weighs a pound. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more budget friendly, I'll link one below and you can check that chair out. Now keep in mind when you're chair shopping, oftentimes you can find a deal on them. So make sure you're applying, like I mentioned the discount code earlier, make sure you're, you're using those resources. Also another thing, they have weight limits. So before I cut like hundred pounds, I weighed 300 pounds. If I were to sit in this chair, it's gonna break straight up. So be conscious of that as well whenever you're shopping. Number six, <laughs> cook more, cook more. Be strategic here. It's cold out. You can bring things that you're supposed to refrigerate and you don't have to worry about it. For instance, you know, you can buy really cheap these egg holders and you can use those to bring eggs with you and you can fry them up in like a little eight inch skillet. This way, this weighs about half a pound. It's a Sea to Summit skillet. It's got a coating, non-stick coating. You can take some olive oil in a little travel size bottle and you can use a skillet like this. You can make biscuits. Like you can put biscuits in here, put this by an open fire, put some aluminum foil over top, bake some biscuits, bake, fry some eggs, fry some bacon, cook more, cook yourself a big breakfast. Bring steak, steak and peppers and cook that over the fire at night or over your stove. Cook more, bring more food, cook it, just enjoy and have fun. Now we're at camp, we got everything set up. We've been enjoying our day, enjoying our time. Number seven, be careful with this. Don't do it too close to bedtime, but drink something warm. You know, my go-to is hot chocolate, but some people love um, some tea, some nice green tea, prep some before they start relaxing and warming up from the inside out and, and heading to bed. And that brings me to tip number eight, pee, pee. Pee! Pee before you go to bed because your body has to warm up the urine that's inside your bladder and it's gonna take energy for your body to do that and that energy could be used to heat you up. You know, heat up the air around you inside your sleeping bag or top quilt instead of heating up liquid inside your body. So make sure you pee before you crawl into bed. If you didn't drink anything warm or maybe you're still a little cold, it often helps to do a few jumping jacks or maybe jog in place or anything like that that's gonna raise your core body temperature just a little bit, not enough to sweat, but just a little bit before you crawl into bed. And that's gonna make it that much easier for your body to warm up the air around you, you know, inside your sleeping bag or inside your top quilt. Number 10, oh, we've had such a long day. We are crawling into bed and oh, oh, hold on a second. I feel a cold spot up here. Tip number 10 is if there's an issue, get up and fix it. If it's the draft collar's not tucked in on your hammock, if your suspension's not right, get up and fix it. If it's your tent has a gap somewhere it's not supposed to have, get up and fix it. You know, it's gonna be better even if you have to warm back up. It's gonna be better for you to get up and fix whatever the issue is and then get back into your sleep system than it is to just lie there and suffer all night. So my advice would be take the hit and then warm back up. Tip number 11, we got so much weight, right? You carried all this extra stuff, but you're out having fun. So on my trips, now this is just me speaking, in the wintertime, often I like to do low miles and more smiles. Try that. Try not just obligating yourself to busting out miles. Try slowing down, take some time, smell the non-existent roses because there's no flowers because it's freezing outside. Enjoy yourself. Low miles, more smiles. 
Comment below with any winter tips that you have and tell me what you enjoyed about the video. Uh, if you enjoyed, give me one of these, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.